I'm gonna try my best with old glasses. Hey everybody, I'm Renocio, and you uh, may have noticed that there's been a huge gap between my last video and this one. That's because I have ADHD. And one of the magical things about this superpower is that sometimes you experience a thing called hyperfixation. For the past three weeks, my life has been a loop of... So we do have a bunch of drawings we could plug away at. Uh... Okay, well, we could work on some of the dolls in progress. Uh... Okay, well, we should probably work on some kind of new video. Uh, I just want to draw Jag stuff. Oh, okay. Hmm? Yeah, we'll just do like a speed paint video of a Jack drawing. Uh... The thing about hyperfixation is that it will only allow you to focus on one thing, and that one thing had better be immediately gratifying, otherwise your brain's gonna go, no, nope, I'm bored, and move on to the next thing. It'll still be a related thing, but it won't be like the, the thing you were trying to do with it. All of it just to say, this drawing, which only took me about four work hours, actually took me closer to like a week and a half, and some heavy bribery, because my brain, instead of doing it, wanted to draw eight to ten other art pieces, some of which were fully rendered. Write a 10k word fanfic in two days. Present a dissertation on time travel and uh, multiverse mechanics. And drag my wife into a rare pair rowboat with me. Toot toot baby! TLDR, sorry for the wait, and uh, I hope you're ready for a drawing based on a 20 year old video game franchise because that's what you're getting. There were two main things that motivated my interest in drawing this, besides my brain's current lock on the franchise, and the first was the art of Luigi Lucarelli, an artist I found on Instagram whose style is extremely expressive and round and built on these simple shapes. I've always been a huge fan of art styles that manage to capture the fullness and weight of characters, and I love these big round eyes. Luigi's style is especially interesting to me because he manages to make character faces out of the wildest shapes. There's a couple of uh, speed drawings on his Instagram that capture this and are well worth the watch. Every so often I try to emulate someone else's style in order to pick up new tricks, and these drawings screamed to be attempted. So I started my drawing by doing some loose scribbly faces, trying to kind of get a feel for the style. I think I might use some of these sketches in the future as a base for something bigger because I really dug the variety. The second thing that really interested me was coming up with a human design for Daxter, the character on the left. In the game series, he shows up once as a human in the beginning of the first game, decked out in those a polygons of the PS2 era, and then spends the rest of the series as an Otzel. There are plenty of fandom interpretations of what this guy would look like changed back, given that he's about five or six years older in Jack X than he is in Jack and Daxter, and they're more or less the same with a few variations. I like to picture him as tall and lanky, with a big wild fluff of hair and some sharp canines to harken back to his time as a small carnivorous mammal. On the flip side, even though Jack has a canonical design, I personally like leaning into the fact that he's an outdoor kid with gymnastic tendencies and a tiny character model, and make him more short and stocky than Dax. These features translate over into his wide nose and more full lips as well. I had uh, no sweet clue what I was doing with the posing here. <laughs> I didn't want anything too complicated because I was more interested in the character design than any like interesting movement, but either because I gave myself too little room to move or because Jack is just a difficult character to make look casual, I did a lot of uh, hmm, um, huh, okay. He's even posed like a model at one point. Like what even is this? Eventually I decided to give the poor booger a morph gun, because that's what he spends the later games toting around, and I thought it would make him look a little more comfortable, I guess? <laughs> of course this meant I had to go get references, because when have I ever drawn a gun in my life? <laughs> I rarely draw objects anyway, but especially not difficult ones with lots of detail. But I guess that means this drawing was a double challenge for me. Hey, look at all this learning! Jack's difficult posing continued on in his hands, and boy did these suckers give me trouble! I reworked them a whole bunch of times, and they're still pretty goofy looking in the final result, but sometimes you're just tired and you want to move on.
Crossed arms have always given me trouble, so I guess that's challenge number three in this speed paint. Because Daxter's last canonical human design was based on him living in Sandover, which is more of a rural, tropical place, I wanted to give him something new outfit-wise. After the course of the games, one could imagine him kicking it with Jack in the Wasteland because these boys are attached at the hip, oh my god, you codependent little boogers. And the Spargan style of dress is way more fun. He gets a couple of pauldrons with skulls, in nod to the pair being referenced as the demolition duo by the fandom, and a bracer with a lightning bolt as a reference to Dax calling himself Orange Lightning in the games. I went in and detailed more of Dax's face because he was looking a little bit too cartoony next to Jack, and in doing so, I feel like he gained a lot more character. I exaggerated his expression and messed with the mouth and eyebrows until his expression was more feral and less cutesy, which feels more on brand. Jack likewise was roughened up, though I couldn't help giving him a little bit of a smile too. It's not 2005 anymore. He doesn't have to be a hypermasculine, trauma-ridden emo boy. Let my boy have good things. I've been having a lot of fun inking since I found a pen tool that I liked, though I still find this one is more wispy and has more extreme tapering than I'd prefer. I like the character it gives my art, but it would be nice to have a backup setting that's like cleaner and less stylistic, you know? If anyone's got suggestions for pen settings on Psy, I would love to hear them. It's always been interesting to me how some artists give themselves super tidy sketches to line over, whereas others just kind of wing it. I uh, definitely lean towards the looser side of that scale. I tend to follow the face sketch pretty closely, but everything else I sort of alter as needed. Which side of the sketch scale do you guys tend to favor? I always enjoy drawing braids, they're just a bunch of little hearts. The circle on the end of this one is a precursor orb, something you collect in the games. Did the boys find a tiny copper egg in the sand and had Dax plug it into his hair? Or did he get that custom made? Who is to say? I also went a little nuts with the lines in the hair and I, I really dig the result. Dax's big old mane did give me some struggle, but eventually I reined it in. No wonder he just shoves it back with a pair of goggles and calls it a day. Jeez. One thing I've always liked about Jack's design is that he canonically has different shaped ears than everybody else. This is never explained. <laughs> I made the mistake of doing all of Daxter's hair before I remembered I needed to find Jack's ear somewhere in the mess, so I drew it out on a separate layer and then erased the hair where needed afterward.
I did my best with the morph gun, but boy, I struggle with straight things. <laughs> and so the shapes are all over the place. The perspective is a little off in the final product too, but eh, I'm not chucked up over it. I gave the boys a bunch of scars because they've been through a lot in the course of the games, uh, including torture, battle with monsters, battle with armed militia, vehicle crashes, emotional abuse, and whatever this is. I thought it would be fun to reference the orange lightning bit again on Dax's forehead, though I have no idea how any reasonable world-building mechanic would manage a scar like that. Using the magic wand tool for my flat colors was kind of helpful. I still always have to do cleanup, but my life has been so different since I discovered it and the bucket fill. <laughs> As far as color choices go, I mostly stuck with the canon suggestions, which meant tan and blue for Jack, and red and gold for Daxter. I did a lot of fixing stuff as I went too, cleaned up lines, drew the other part of a bag that was disappearing into the crease of Daxter's hip, uh, added the other side of Jack's scarf, reversed which goggle lens of Jack's was which, though I still got the sides swapped, and guess who's you good at using reference photos? Also, I'm shipper trash, so I added a couple of details that I feel like work, even if you aren't in the Jackster rowboat and just treat these two dipshits like friends, but you know, for me, they're there. <laughs> anyway, the fabric under Dax's pauldron is the same color as Jack's shirt, and the chestplate he's wearing is the same one Jack gets in the third game, which is some kind of precursor artifact. You can't have your tall and mouthy bestie getting himself impaled or shot at, you know, so extra armor is the way to go. Picking out Daxter's hair color was tough because I tend to like to lean towards realism in my fan art, and his canonical bright red in hair was gonna look anime as hell if I didn't tone it down. <laughs> I started with an orangey red base and then built up from there, which I think made it a little less neon in the end. 
The gradient hairstyles on these boys is one of my favorite things about their designs and they're just a blast to color. I wanted to try something else new and exciting with this drawing, and that was changing the line art color. By hitting the preserve opacity button on the line art layer, I was able to go through and alter the line color around each colored part to a color slightly darker than the base. I want to say color in a lot. The idea is that this makes the drawing look softer overall and a little bit less cartoony, which is kind of what I was hoping to get into. I haven't totally figured it out, and by the end I filtered things so much that they kind of started getting back into black territory, but I do like what remained of the effect. I had to do a quick test shade layer to see if I liked what I was doing with the lines before going all in because it is kind of time consuming. Once my flat colors and line art were all ready, I created a base layer that I decided I was going to try clipping my filter layers to. This uh, kind of worked. Undoing the clipping after I chitted everything revealed all the colors outside the lines, which is what I was hoping to avoid with the clipping. So I ended up magic wand selecting the base layer and then inverting the selection and erasing everything outside of it. So, you know, not exactly as planned, but I was still able to use that base layer to restrict my shade and loomy layers within the shape of the characters the way I've done with previous drawings. I corrected the colors of the morph gun here too because, whoops, I just left it a boring gray. It's still so goofy looking, but maybe when the boys posed for this photo, Jack was just given a prop. <laughs> maybe it's a cardboard cutout. After much debate, I decided that I did want to give everything a base cell shading, so I went through each layer and added shadows in a slightly darker and slightly different color. Red's got a warm purpley shading, blue's got cold purple, gold's got orange, etc.
I started with a shade layer, which I always put down as a normal layer first. This gives me a really dramatic view of what I'm shading, so I know the pattern of it makes sense. Then I dropped a Lumi layer where I did the opposite. After that came my usual rave party of slider adjustments, where I played with the opacity and color of the shade and Lumi layers. This drawing's got a couple of extra overlay layers, both on the characters and the background, to make everything look more cohesive. Finally, we needed a background. I copped out here and just made sand dunes, but that's because it fits the scene and it also doesn't distract from the characters. I then selected the base layer of the characters and used that as a guide to erase the background behind them, just to make sure the background colors weren't seeping through in places and changing the color of the image. I also went back super belatedly and fixed the tattoo on Jack's arm, because that's a lazy House of Mars symbol if ever there was one. <laughs> I'm actually not sure how to do tattoos that don't look like stickers on a character's skin, so my ears are wide open for suggestions. I filtered a few more things after this, and then I actually went back and widened the image to include the rest of Daxter's arm and then leave more room for their hair, which I didn't film, but ta-da! Anyway, thanks so much for watching this, guys. You know the drill. If you liked it, please let me know with a like or a comment or something to that effect. And if you'd like to stick around and see more of this kind of stuff in the future, feel free to step Stubby, and I will see you in the next video. P.S. Thank you for like the 150 almost subscriptions. You guys are awesome. I'm very touched by that. That's very kind. I'm also like a little bit shook. Like, what, what are you doing? Also, if you'd like to see more of my jack art or more of my fandom stuff in general, I'm mostly active in the garbage patch that is Tumblr, but you can also find me on Instagram. And if it's up your alley, if that's why you're here in the first place on this channel, me and I do have a very specific doll Instagram. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will do my best to put out my next video sooner than later. <laughs> okay, bye! Parkour! Hey, this is gonna be a real hard because I can't, I can't see anything. Excuse you! Excuse you! Can't see you, but excuse you. All of which is to say, this drawing, which actually only took me about four hours, actually. Knock knock. Hmm? What? what is that? What is that? <laughs> He's got fun and fancy feet.